Hey guys, it's Sean Klinger and Chris Siebenar with Vital MX, and we're at Kawia right now to check out the 2021 Kawasaki KX250X and KX450X. Uh, these models did not exist last year in this form. To be fair, they are obviously heavily influenced and basically a, uh, a very close copy to the motocross versions of these bikes released for 2021. Basically, the, the changes that these models got were to move them into the cross country realm. So not all the way into enduro with lights and bigger tank and all the that kind of thing, uh, more trail bikes, but you know, that, that in between that GNCC racer, that works racer, national hare and hound, that kind of racing. Starting with the suspension, both front and rear, both got lower spring rates. There are different suspension on these bikes. The 250 has the KYB, the 450 has the Showa, uh, but they went lower spring rates and softer damping um, to handle off-road. Transmission in both are exactly the same as the motocross bikes, but they did change the final gearing. So they went from 1350 on both to 1351. They added a tooth in the rear for both bikes for uh, a little bit more low end power. And then obviously the 250 has a hydraulic clutch, which, you know, that the motocross version of that bike last year did not have. So that's new. Um, 450 keeps the hydraulic clutch. These bikes both have 18 inch rear wheels. Uh, so that's different than the motocross versions. So we have Steve's here who was riding these bikes and we're gonna get the feel um, from him. So let's start with the 250X. So how was the, the hydraulic clutch and how did that work with the engine? The hydraulic clutch, you know, feels very similar to the 450, possibly a little bit lighter pull. Okay. Um, and again, one of the things that I loved about the Kawasaki 450's clutch uh, and they, they both have the same thing with the, that Belleville spring washer type feel. It's a very linear, very smooth feed and feel in what, as you're letting up the clutch, as the power is engaging and the clutch is starting to grab. These ones, it's a little bit broader so you can slip the clutch a little with a little bit more control and you can work your way through some of those tighter sections without the bike trying to jump away from you. So today, uh, obviously there was some tight sections and there was a GP uh, section and then also the track. So how did this new suspension setting with lighter springs, new damping settings, how did they feel compared to riding the motorbike? The suspension was definitely more comfortable going through the off-road loops, going through um, some of the tighter sections of the off-road loops where it's like really chunked out. You kind of have some square edges that you're, you're approaching and you're hitting a lot. Um, I was kind of wondering how this was going to be because it did build up the vet track here a little bit, which was a motocross loop. They did build it up. It was a little peakier, so I was wondering how this was going to handle it. But even over jumping a couple sections, coming up short on a couple sections, you know, during like the first beginning laps, I never felt anything bottom. Um, so there's still a lot of hold up when you get to that section of, of a race. Um, but there's still some plushness when you're off into the trails in the back. Some bikes that come from almost like an enduro bike that is made into a cross country bike, uh, those can feel almost like good in, in the trail sections, you hit the motocross track and then all of a sudden the suspension feels like hollow. Yep. Like you're just bottoming it everywhere, it's pitching, it's diving, and it just is that wallowy, spongy feel that is not good for, for moto. Coming from more of a motocross setting to cross country, is is that what you felt or was it more definitely hold up? i think it's okay. again that's why I was, I was saying this would almost be more catered towards that type of racing okay. um and like i've done uh, the works races and like havasu up north where even the off-road sections are really fast um, but then as you're hopping on the motocross track you still have to have a bike that can handle a motocross track because even though that typically makes up a smaller section of a race you do have jumps which can have consequence if you go into it you know and the bike just bottoms out going into the face of a jump or it can't handle that well so i think it's a good happy medium between trail and track so moving on to the 450 uh you spent a lot of time riding the the last year's motor i mean obviously this bike didn't exist but it was the motocross version very much the same and you actually raced that off road so i mean you can rely on that to kind of how did that bike riding it off-road compared to riding the new 450X today in these trails? Uh, it's actually very similar. Um, you know, the bike that we raced that was built for off-road racing. Uh, you know, what we did with it was 
18 inch wheel, slightly softer suspension. Yep. The only difference was it had a bigger gas tank, um, you know, and it had some bark busters on there. But this was, it's very similar to the bike that we raced in, in the Mint 400, um, which was very fast sections. Uh, lots of sand rollers, lots of sand whoops, a lot of rocky whoops, some hard pack sections. Not super single track, but um, almost like two track areas. You know, I feel this bike is very much of what we raced there. Well, we just wrapped up the 450 shootout. So compared to Moto, what what can people expect if they're if they're thinking about getting the 450X? Like, what are the biggest differences that you noticed? Suspension is going to be part of the biggest difference. Um, and going back to the 450 shootout, if anybody has watched that, one of the things I loved about the Kawasaki bike, the 450 motocross bike, was the suspension. Um, it held up great. It still had some plushness to it, both front and rear. And this, it just kind of took that plush zone and just pushed it a little bit further. Now, some people said even the motocross uh, fork was a little too soft for them. Were you in that camp? And if you were, is this even softer and to the detriment of the bike or not? So it's funny you say that because yes, I was in the camp of, uh, we ended up going, I want to say about five, maybe six clicks stiffer on the motocross fork. Okay. But being that the motocross track was a little bit slower. Um, yeah, the vet track. Or the, yeah, the vet track was a little bit slower. You know, I thought it would handle great on a motocross bike. I think it, it, the way it is valved right now, works great for off-road and works good for the track. Okay, but still, I mean, it would be too soft for dedicated mode. Exactly. But any change, I mean, any differences between the two as far as like, you know, KYB and Showa or um, or even the way that the, the chassis, because now that they share the same chassis, you know, there's slight, obviously, differences in the way engine works. You know, a 250 is gonna feel different than a 450, which obviously affects handling and affects you know, how the bike turns. Did you notice anything different between these in that regard? I don't know if it's just the additional weight, you know, of the engine. Yep. Um, on and reciprocating like mass. Yep. And how the power is fed into this chassis, maybe combined with the suspension, I kind of felt the whole package over here was a bit more forgiving oh, okay. than on the 250. I did feel the 250 was a little bit more hyper okay. um, through some of the sections where this, you know, absorbed um, some of those little kicks that you would get into, the 250 did actually have that kick. Um, so I feel like this, a little bit plusher package from motocross than what the 250 is. The 250 I feel is maybe a little bit closer to the motocross bike still. A lot of times I find when I ride a, a, a really good cross country bike, I'm thinking this is kind of the do it all bike, you know, for, for the guys, not there are very few people that are motocross only or off-road only. I mean, so many of us love to ride the track, love to ride the trails, we like to do it all. Um, a lot of times I make the argument for especially vet guys, if you're not 20 or under and trying to be an amateur pro or whatever, you're just riding with your buddies, I always argue that a cross-country bike could be a great all-arounder, even if you ride mostly motocross. Would, how do these feel in that regard, or are they going too much towards a trail bike? I feel like that would probably depend, you know, more on the tracks that you ride. Uh, but I think one thing to, that's important to know about both of these bikes, going to when these were released, comments people had about, you know, what these did or did not include on them. It was mostly um, what they didn't include. Mostly what they didn't include. I feel like what was missed was the price. You know, these bikes, I think we all know who everyone's talking about in comparison. Right. Uh, to those bikes, these are almost $1,000 less. Well, I mean, and, and basically what you're saying too is, and what Kawasaki's pointed out is that the 250 from the Moto version, this is $100 more. What you get for $100 more, I mean, the, getting an 18 inch rim alone with spokes and stuff would be more you know, and, and all the extra things that they did. So yes, on paper, when you look at Kawasaki's cross country bikes, they don't come with as many extras, uh, but they're also, like you said, much cheaper. So it is kind of uh, up to you if, if you think that, you know, if you just want something ready to go that you're not gonna add anything to, maybe you want to spend more money for something else, but if you're, it's a yeah. good platform. You know, it, you know, it is a great platform. Board. Yeah. So I think um, I think it 
I am eventually obviously going to ride these bikes. I'm very excited about riding them because the cross country bikes are, are kind of some that I've found that I've really enjoyed over the, the years with, with how versatile they are and um, how much fun they're, they are to ride. So if you are on vitalmax.com, please check out our YouTube channel. If you are on YouTube, click like, click subscribe. Thanks for watching.